Welcome, horror lovers, today we discuss When Evil Lurks, a captivating supernatural folk horror film from 2023. Beware, horror lies ahead. The movie begins set in rural, apocalyptic Argentina, under the shadowy embrace of dawn, brothers Pedro and Jimmy are startled by the echo of gunfire. Wondering if it's a poacher, they prepare themselves and load their shotgun. However, they wisely decide to wait for the sun to rise before safely investigating the source of the shots. Along with their dogs, they begin to inspect the origin of the gunshots. An intriguing melody leads to a macabre discovery, the bisected remains of a man, severed as if by a crude, unfeeling hand of fate. They speculate it might have been a large predator, but the clean cut suggests otherwise. Beside the remains, they find an ancient mystical artifact. Jimmy recalls having seen it before but can't remember its purpose. Among other documents, they discover a map leading to a neighbor's house. This gruesome find, as if guided by a malevolent magnetism, draws them to a dilapidated shack hidden within the dense forest. There, they meet Maria Elena, a woman whose age is evident in her weathered appearance, along with her two sons. She reveals that she's awaiting someone capable of confronting her eldest son, Uriel, who has undergone a horrific transformation. His being is now merged with a rotten, a creature bound by an unborn demon waiting to manifest physically. Maria Elena admits she tried to use prayer to combat the entity, but Pedro dismisses such methods as ineffective. The body they discovered belonged to a cleaner, summoned by Maria Elena in a desperate bid to prevent the demon's emergence by ending Uriel's life. However, their desperate situation is ignored by the authorities, who consider the supernatural threat outside their responsibilities. In search of a solution, the brothers turn to Ruiz, the property owner, recognizing the scale of the threat they face, a viral, spiritual menace so severe they contemplate selling their land and fleeing. Ruiz suspects the government's involvement, suggesting the outbreak was intentional to seize his land. Later, Ruiz, fraught with concern and dining with his wife, decides to take action against Uriel. Ignoring his wife's pleas for caution, he arms himself and heads to confront the infected. Upon breaking into the house, Maria Elena pleads with him not to shoot, warning that the infection would spread further. Uriel, seeking release and the chance to disseminate the infection, goads Ruiz by threatening to possess his unborn child. Recognizing the potential danger, Ruiz retreats and awaits the brothers' assistance in managing the rot. Resolved to distance the menace as far as they could, they set about the arduous task of removing the rotten from the house. With significant effort, they manage to secure it in the pickup truck and intent on disposing of the infection and averting total disaster. However, a twist of fate disrupted their plans. An unexpected child in their path forced them to swerve, causing Uriel to be inadvertently ejected from the vehicle, an event unnoticed by them until much later. Ruiz, keen to distance himself from the ordeal, hastily deemed the issue resolved and withdrew to the safety of his home. The dawn, however, brought a fresh terror. Ruiz's pregnant wife, Jimena, encountered a goat plagued by the same sinister force that had overtaken Uriel. Among the flock, this particular goat stood out, unfazed by the panic that ensued when Ruiz fired a shot into the air. Defiantly, the goat seemed to offer itself to the barrel of Ruiz's shotgun, as though seeking release for its demonic inhabitant. Despite Jimena's desperate warnings, Ruiz proceeded to shoot the goat, a decision that led to his immediate and horrifying demise at the hands of his wife, who fell victim to the same malevolent influence. In the midst of this chaos, Maria Elena's other son issued a cryptic caution about electric light to the brothers. As their town fell prey to a mounting horror, Jamie and Pedro decided it was time to escape, rallying their family for an urgent departure. Pedro burst into the home of his ex-wife, Sabrina, who now lived with her new husband, Leonardo. In a frantic bid to rid himself of any trace of the contagion, Pedro stripped off his clothes, only for the family dog, Roger, to begin investigating the discarded garments. Sabrina emerged, incensed, demanding Pedro leave and accusing him of madness. Pedro, however, insisted on the urgency of their situation, even as Roger continued to sniff the contaminated clothing. After changing into fresh attire, Pedro burned his old clothes right outside, leaving Sabrina and Leonardo in shock. Pedro attempted to convey the gravity of their predicament to Sabrina, stressing the necessity of their flight due to the unleashed possessed. His son Santino inquired if Roger and his little sister Vicky could accompany them. Pedro assured him that everyone would be taken, urging him to awaken his brother. Amidst the chaos, Sabrina declared that nobody would leave, urging Leonardo to alert the authorities. 
The situation escalated as Roger, driven to aggression by the possession, attacked Vicky, dragging her violently away from the safety of her home, with Leonardo and Sabrina thrown into a state of alarm. Pedro re-entered the house to collect Santino and his other son, Yer, who was mentally challenged. Leonardo, now armed with a shotgun, was cautioned by Pedro against using it, fearing it might exacerbate the spread of the infection. Nevertheless, while chasing after Leonardo, Pedro urged the arriving police officers not to shoot the dog to prevent further contamination. Ignoring Pedro's warnings, Leonardo discharged his shotgun, ending Roger's life. In a shocking turn, Pedro returns to Sabrina's house. Finding Vicky unharmed, Vicky unsettlingly tells Sabrina that her father, Leonardo, intends to kill her, cryptically mentioning a car crushing her while she smiles eerily. In the next moment, the unthinkable happens as both Sabrina and Vicky are tragically run over by Leonardo's pickup truck. Pedro then hurries to collect Jamie and his mother, fleeing with his family. As they drive, the grim nature of the infection becomes a topic of conversation. Santino, curious, asks his grandmother about the possession, while Yer, his elder brother, ominously mutters possessed, possessed. The grandmother explains that it's a malevolent force that invades a person, using their body as a vessel for its birth. She hauntingly recites, they get into your body, they infect your mind. They take the most valuable thing in your life, your body is no longer your body. She then reassures them that the threat isn't as dire with proper precautions in place. She outlines seven rules to prevent the rotten from infiltrating one's mind. Avoid using electric lights. Steer clear of animals. Do not touch anything that has been near the rotten. Refrain from harming them. Never utter the evil by its name. Never shoot them with firearms. However, she inadvertently omits the seventh rule. And she begins listing various demon names to emphasize her point. Amidst this eerie atmosphere, Pedro receives a disturbing call from Sabrina, who he had seen perish. She eerily claims to know his whereabouts and intends to retrieve her children. In a fit of panic, Pedro destroys the phone on and they hasten to find sanctuary with Mirta, a seasoned cleaner and Jamie's trusted advisor, who offers them refuge for the night. Despite Mirta's caution regarding Yer's odd behavior, Jamie dismisses her concerns. The night, however, unfolds with new terrors as the possessed corpse of Sabrina abducts Santino. Pedro's grandmother, a witness to the abduction, is paralyzed by uncertainty on how to react. Pedro witnesses the horrifying sight of Sabrina, now a vessel for the rotten, escaping with Santino. Mirta reveals a chilling truth to Pedro in the car, the demon has ensnared Yer. Inside the house, Mirta finally discloses the forgotten seventh rule, the fear of death can empower the demon, advising Pedro that pursuing his son could inadvertently aid the entity. Driven by desperation, Jamie sets out to rescue Santino, only to find Sabrina in a grotesque act. Overcome with emotion, Jamie strikes her with a car, resulting in a catastrophic crash. Amidst the chaos, Sabrina hauntingly confesses Jamie's past affection for her, despite their complex family ties. Upon entering the house, Yer's behavior no longer reflects his autism. He calmly tells his grandmother he's cold and hungry, leaving her staring in horror. Pedro and Mirta's quest to find Uriel and halt the spread of demonic influence brings them to a chilling standoff in an abandoned schoolhouse, where possessed children engage in deceit to protect Uriel, ensuring the infection's proliferation. Mirta discovers Uriel beneath the school's stage, setting up the ancient relic intended to eliminate the original rotten. Meanwhile, Pedro uncovers the concealed bodies of teachers and adults, preserved in salt to mask the stench. Confronting Uriel, Pedro is urged to end his suffering. However, a child's manipulation sends Pedro in search of an axe, leading to his entrapment and Mirta's brutal assault by the children, forcing Pedro to face Uriel alone. Despite Pedro's determined efforts, striking Uriel repeatedly, the demon within is ultimately born. The demon emerges triumphant, marking Pedro with four bloodlines on his forehead as the possessed children look on, signaling Pedro's profound loss at dawn. Returning home, the family encounters yet more despair, Uriel's brother confesses to Jamie that he was compelled by an inner voice to kill the cleaner sent to deal with Uriel, dismembering him and feeding him to the pigs. The situation reaches a harrowing conclusion when Yer, seemingly under the guise of his condition, horrifyingly regurgitates the hair of his grandmother. This gruesome revelation indicates that he has consumed her, marking the ultimate betrayal and loss within the family. Engulfed in sorrow, Pedro falls into a deep despair, standing alone amid the wreckage of his once familiar life, 
a stark symbol of the pervasive and all-consuming darkness that has taken everything he cherished. When Evil Lurks emerges as a towering force in contemporary horror cinema, boasting a striking visual style powered by meticulously crafted props, sidelining the need for CGI. The film masterfully arouses not just a visceral fear with its immediate terror but also provokes thought with its deeper, more intricate exploration of the dark aspects of human nature and the supernatural. The immersive sound design in this film masterfully amplifies the suspense, enveloping you in a truly chilling cinematic experience. It ingeniously melds themes of possession and infection, showcasing a remarkable harmony between these horror staples. Demian Rugna, the visionary director behind the film, revealed at Fantastic Fest that this harrowing tale was inspired by the grim reality of agricultural pesticides in his native Argentina, drawing a sinister connection to actual events and adding a layer of chilling authenticity to the narrative. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next video. Watch out and take care.